Hey folks, today we've got a brand new smart trainer from a brand new smart trainer company, Swift. Swift has released their own smart trainer, though it's not really their own, but we'll get into that in just a second. Remember back a few months ago when Zwift announced they were basically canceling their smart bike and smart trainer hardware project? Well, <laughs> psych, it's here now. Except it's actually not the same project as that. Uh, that was a Zwift Ride, Zwift Hub, a totally like integrated smart bikey sort of thing, uh, versus this is just a smart trainer and designed to be a smart trainer that is incredibly affordable despite being top end spec, or at least high mid -spec. Specs. Now I've been using this for a few weeks and this trainer is the Zwift Hub, but in reality it's the Jet Black Volt. That's a smart trainer I reviewed about a year ago. You can find a video post or something like that up there on that. And I gave it a great score. Great, I don't have scores, but I gave it a great review. It was an awesome trainer for the money. Uh, it was priced at 850 bucks. It included a cassette. But this thing here, this exact same trainer with a different paint job, is priced at 499 dollars and euros and 449 British pounds. Uh, also includes a cassette of your choice now. So you can choose 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12 speed cassette. Uh, and it's got a new kind of color scheme. They added a few things that make it easier to use. And I know that might sound silly, but hear me out on this, it's pretty interesting. First up, a quick run through the specs. It is dual AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart, in particular AMP Plus FEC and Bluetooth Smart uh, FTMS, which is basically the control standards for industry trainers. That means it works with more than just Zwift, as I've tested and I'll show you in just a second. Uh, second, the flywheel weight is at 4.7 kilograms and however many pounds that is on the screen right there. Uh, the sound, it's essentially silent. Uh, the only sound you're going to hear is the drivetrain, uh, which again is just your bike. So however clean your bike is, is how much noise this thing will make. There's no folding up of this trainer, nor does it have like a, a handle for moving it around and stuff. But again, compromises you have to make when you have a trainer that's 499 bucks. Uh, it's got a maximum simulated grade of 16% and incline of 1800 watts. And the stated accuracy is plus or minus 2.5%. Another thing we will also talk about in just a second. And then finally, it's got an interesting little party trick around rebroadcasting your heart rate that's super useful for Apple TV users because it doesn't take up an additional heart rate channel uh, when using that. So you can use it for other things. And now, if you are finding this video interesting or useful, now would be a great time to whack that like button at the bottom there. It really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. So let's dive into what's actually changed between this and the Jet Black Volt that they basically have repainted. Uh, and there's basically three categories of things. Uh, the first is kind of the most obvious. It comes in a box that says Zwift Hub on it. Here's a little shot of the box there. I don't know if this is absolutely the final box or some discussion or some changes there, but it'll probably look roughly like this. I like the box. It's it's a nice box for boxes, however boxes go. Now, a second, they've done obviously a repainting of it, if you will, uh, and added some kind of graphics on there. And this may sound silly at first, but what you notice if you look closely, there's this blue section here and this orange section here. But if you put these legs on wrong, it'll actually has text there that says you did it wrong, uh, which is brilliant because a lot of trainers, not a lot of trainers, a number of trainers out there, <coughs> Wahoo Kicker Core uh, and the Jet Black Volt itself to begin with, uh, basically weren't like super clear as to which way the legs should go. Uh, you had to double check things a bunch of times. And again, the manuals could have been better, but this makes it really obvious uh, that, you know, if you're put on the wrong way, it's going to show you right there that you're an idiot and you put it on the wrong way. I mean, you're not an idiot because I've done it too. Maybe, maybe I'm an idiot. I don't know. The next thing they've done is they've added these cool little cards. So they've got like a manual that you'll probably read um, or not, uh, but they've got these cards here. Uh, and what these do is they basically slot in uh, in the back of your bike and it allows you to figure out exactly how wide your particular bike is. So is it a 130 or 135 millimeter bike for quick release? Uh, is it a 142 or 148 millimeter uh, for through axle? Uh, and that in turn then allows you to figure out which way to put these little adapters. Uh, so there's one here for this one. I have a through axle on it right now. Uh, so on this side as well. And here's a quick release one that goes in there. Uh, and the reason that's interesting is that if you're just getting into the smart trainer realm, you may have no idea exactly what the through axle length or what your quick skewer length is on your bike. Uh, and this makes it super easy. It's color coded. You can see here is my uh, skewer for my road bike that is uh, quick release. And it's got the little purple on there because it matches the purple here. And that in turn, I put it a certain way because again, it's the certain length. Uh, and this is like just silly, brilliant stuff that no one else has done. And that can be really confusing for not just beginners, but even experienced people. Like for me, for example, I've got like this constant parade of loaner bikes coming through from, you know, for review and things like that. Usually they have things on them that I'm reviewing like power meters or lights or whatever the case is. And thus, it's nice to be able to like pull out these silly little cards, stick it in the back of the bike and go, oh, this is exactly this 
particular length and it should be flipped this way. And then the last area they made changes is around the firmware uh, of this device. So it now broadcasts itself as a Zwift Hub trainer and it also connects to the Zwift Companion app. Uh, so that's a great place to kind of start when we talk about the riding experience. Uh, so after we've used these little cards to figure out uh, our you know, adapters and whatnot, we're going to throw our bike on there, we're going to plug it in. It's got a status light that's right here that I'm showing you right now on the screen. Uh, and then we go ahead and open up the Zwift Companion app. Uh, within that, it'll see the trainer on the new hardware tab in the bottom there, uh, and I can update the firmware, and I can also do the heart rate pass-through. Uh, and the idea behind the heart rate pass-through is that if you have a heart rate strap on and you want to compare that with an Apple TV, but you also want to do steering, then you're out of connections because Apple TV only allows two concurrent connections uh, on Bluetooth Smart plus the Apple TV remote. So what they do is they take that heart rate connection and pair it to the trainer instead, and then they funnel that data from the trainer up to Zwift as one channel. So you've got your power, your cadence, your control of the trainer, and your heart rate under one channel, leaving you one extra channel for steering. Uh, notable also because Jet Black actually has a little steering block. There's also one from Elite, and there's probably others as well. Next, at this point, you'll crack open Zwift, assuming you're using Zwift, and you'll pair it up just like any other trainer. So you'll pair it up uh, using Bluetooth FTMS, if on a Bluetooth device, or AMP Plus FEC. Uh, all that's the same. The one downside, though, is that this trainer does not have dual Bluetooth channels. Uh, it has unlimited AMP Plus channels, and it has Bluetooth, and you can do both of those at the same time, but you do not have unlimited or dual or uh, tri Bluetooth channels. And that's something that Wahoo has and Elite has. And I think Saris with their just announced also today trainer has as well. That's still like on the delivery truck right now. So I'll let you know in a couple of days on that one. That matters if you want to connect up a watch, for example, that uses Bluetooth Smart or even another app to go ahead and do uh, dual riding of Zwift and Trainer Row, which is very popular for a lot of people. Now I just showed you Zwift, but you're not limited to Zwift. The cool thing is because this uses AMP Plus on Bluetooth Smart, uh, you can connect with any app. In fact, I did rides on Trainer Road with it. I did rides on Ruby with it uh, in both ERG mode as well as the simulated mode. Uh, and no problems on either of those from like a control and integration standpoint. So what about riding with it? Well, no problems at all. It feels good. It feels basically the same in the same league, the same department, if you will, as the Wahoo Kicker Core, which is about a $900 trainer. Uh, and that makes sense because the flywheel weights are roughly the same as well. Uh, overall, very good inertia feel. It's a very solid trainer, just like I said on the Jet Black Volt review, because again, that's the exact exact same hardware. Zwift has confirmed it's the same hardware. Uh, nothing has changed here except, you know, coloring the little bits on the side and the trainer and stuff like that uh, from a hardware standpoint. So I am very happy with the road feel. It's a very solid trainer. Uh, good stuff there. What about noise? Well, it's quiet. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't make any meaningful amount of sound. Uh, and the only sound you're going to get is from your drivetrain, basically the chain on this cassette right here. And that's mostly based on how clean uh, your chain is and your drivetrain is uh, more than this particular trainer. So you may be asking, why is this not a review? Uh, well, the simple answer is I'm having some moderately substantial accuracy issues. Uh, not just me, but other people as well. And not just on one bike. I have one, two, three, three bikes so far with six power meters uh, that I've tested and uh, having some issues there. And that's kind of odd because the Jet Black Volt, uh, this, this, you know, the repainted version of this, uh, unpainted version of this, uh, was spot on. Super accurate, no problems at all. Uh, and as I said, it's not just me, it's not just one of my bikes, it's lots of bikes. So Zwift has gone back to the table, they're working through the issues, trying to figure out uh, how to fix them or how to undo whatever got broken along the way. Uh, and thus the ship date for this is October 6th, exactly one month from today. And in general, I have kind of a policy on what I title a review. A review, in my mind, should be the same hardware and software that you're getting. Uh, meaning that if you can go out and buy a unit today uh, and get it, you know, today or tomorrow, then that's fair game for review. But in this case, the software is going to change, hopefully, assumedly, over the next month to fix those issues. And I'm pretty confident they're going to be able to fix them because, again, it was working just fine and now it's not. And that's purely a software thing. Point being, I'll be doing a full, legit, in-depth review of this trainer uh, once it's available available to buy and to purchase uh, and basically close to that date where it's on the final firmware. But you know what is available to buy and purchase today? This nifty trainer and chill mug down the merch store down there. It's fully compatible with all beverage types, so no issues there. It's also fully accurate. It holds what it says it's going to hold every single time, which seems like an important thing. Now, as far as this trainer goes uh, and what it's going to have an impact on the industry, it's going to be pretty substantial. $4.99 is an incredible deal for this, especially including a cassette. 
we've never seen a smart trainer, uh, a direct drive smart trainer that low, including a cassette or that low without a cassette. Doesn't matter. It's the best deal uh, out there, at least retail pricing. We've seen some clearance stuff recently, like with the Saris H3, great smart trainer, a little bit louder though. Uh, but again, this price point, it's going to have some pretty significant ramifications across the industry. And the thing is, this trainer is really designed not to make money, not on the hardware. It's designed to go ahead and make money on Zwift subscription services. They hope that you buy it and then use Zwift as a platform. Right now, there's no like forced tie in there from what I can see. Uh, and Zwift in the past has promised that any hardware they make will be open standard and all that goodness. So hopefully that continues forward here as well. But this will undoubtedly cause a lot of trainer companies a fair bit of heartache. Take, for example, something like the tax flux series that's like you know three to four hundred bucks more than this there's no reason to buy that trainer for three to hundred four hundred bucks more than this just simply isn't you could make the argument for something like the wahoo kicker core again three to four hundred bucks more than this because that has the wahoo kicker climb compatibility but then you start to argue like is that worth that much extra? You're gonna pay an extra 400 bucks for the kicker core, plus an extra six or 700 bucks for the climb. Uh, that's a lot of extra cash just to go up and down. So that's something that, again, I think this will have pretty significant ramifications across the industry. And I'm interested to see how the rest of the industry reacts, uh, both from a pricing standpoint, but also just like from a, hey, Zwift, I thought you weren't gonna make hardware standpoint. Anyways, we will see. Uh, gonna be an interesting fall for sure. With that, thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting, useful, whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. I promise you the next 14 days, give or take, are the craziest ever on this channel. Without question, they'll be the biggest, busiest, all the things over the next two weeks. It's absolutely, positively bonkers. With that, have a good one.